Good afternoon, it's Monday, November 9. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. More reports of damage and devastation after another weekend of torrential rain across the island. Our news team has been on the roads looking at the devastation. We begin with our reporter Vashon Brown, who visited the community of Shooters Hill in St. Andrew this morning, where the heavy rains caused more damage. Residents in Shooters Hill, St. Andrew, are on edge. They say the heavy rains have been making their lives miserable. They showed us several houses which are now buried due to landslides. Some people have lost all their furniture. Others realized the danger a few weeks ago when landslides caused by the heavy rains claimed the lives of two people in the area. So they have since moved out to stay with family and friends. Some have also managed to remove almost all their furniture because of fear that more rainfall could come and undermine their houses. We're told that at least eight residents have moved to the St. Benedict's Primary School in St. Andrew for shelter. The residents say they want help to relocate. Meanwhile, Kirk Wright spoke with a resident on Wees Road in Bull Bay, St. Andrew, whose home was flooded by the heavy rains over the weekend. She says at least 10 persons have been affected. Here we are with a lady from Wees Road in Nine Miles, Bull Bay. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Petrona Anderson. Can you spell it for me? Oh, P-E-T-R-O-N-A. All right, so um, we are aware that a week ago, the river, as the residents are telling us, burst twice. But how is it, how is this time different from the last two times? Oh, well, this time the tractor drive and the grind and they use a the truck. I'm talking about in, in terms of the damage that has been done this oh, time around. Damage is, it's rougher than last week. Very hard. It's the first from my living here and I got flooded out already. But it's the first I ever see. The first, it is devastated. Terrible, terrible, because when I got flooded out, I could run over to my neighbor. But my neighbor got flooded out. Everybody on the road coming down the stretch got flooded out. I heard that a little girl was uh, almost got washed away. Yes. Is my neighbor while we were on the house stop. Our daddy was on the house stop trying to fix something and him tell her to stay. But she was up by her uncle, I get to understand. And she said, you know, save my uncle, save my uncle, uncle, I drown on the water, just pitch her away. And she sail and come right down here, and a man named Mr. Keith, and him hold her. God save him too, because him never going to see him out. And him gate couldn't pull. And through the gate couldn't pull, the Lord work it out, that he must stay out there for all her and save her. Finally, the government says that they're going to declare some areas, disaster areas, so people move out and don't live there again. Do you think they should declare this area, disaster area, and all of you would need to move out? Well, I don't have anywhere to move and go now. So what I am saying, if them clean out and they mine the gully and get the stone and everyone said they would cooperate and build that basket. You know what a grind? Or it used to be, and if they do that, then I think we won't get that flooding. Now, residents of Garden Town in East Rural St. Andrew are calling for greater focus on their community following recent heavy rains which have upend upended their lives. This has been exacerbated following weeks of heavy rains which have caused landslides and a major road breakaway. Our reporter Anthony Log is in the community. Anthony, what can you tell us? Thank you, Herman. Now, I'm currently at a section of the Garden Town community known as Stand Up Hill. That's just along the Garden Town main road. Uh, the tone of the residents here is pretty much frustration. The residents have had to walk miles to get in and out of the community, and they're telling our news team that it's tiring, it's frustrating, and they cannot continue to live like this. Now, I've been here since about 10 o'clock this morning and I've noticed several land slippages, uh, several breakaways, and it's extremely rough for the residents here. Now, the taxi operators here in the community are also making much of this situation. Community members are assisting residents to get across these areas because as you can imagine, residents uh, are extremely fearful that they might fall and there could be further land slippages in this area. 
So we'll be monitoring the situation here and we'll provide you with updates in subsequent newscasts. Until then, it's back to you in studio. All right, thank you. Anthony Look there in Bull Bay, St. Andrew. Now, the, in Gardentown rather. Now, the Jamaica Coffee Exporters Association is calling for the government to declare East Rural St. Andrew and surrounding communities in the Blue Mountain Coffee area a disaster zone. Heavy rains over the past two weeks have caused severe damage to the roads in East Rua St. Andrew, which is the home of the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee. Last week, several landslides occurred along the Garden Town Main Road. But on Sunday, it was worsened as a section of the road collapsed, leaving it impassable to vehicular traffic. It's why President of the Jamaica Coffee Exporters Association, Norman Grant, has made the call for a disaster zone to be declared. This morning, I am making a urgent an urgent call to the government that in cabinet they should approve that parliament moves a motion tomorrow to declare east rural saint andrew and the surrounding areas in fact throughout the extended blue mountain range a disaster zone Mr. Grant says now more than ever, government resources are needed to assist in the redevelopment of the rural road network following the devastation caused by the rain in those areas. What we can do is to implement a preventative maintenance program that will prevent the recurrence. And the reason for the call for the disaster zone is to allow the government to allocate well-needed resources to address these concerns. He warns that the lack of attention to the rural areas will have a detrimental impact on the country's economy. It has affected the operations of coffee factories, um, farmers going to the market, you know, and, and, and it has also affected utilities. A number of these areas are now without um, electricity, disrupted water supply. In the meantime, local government minister Desmond McKenzie says about 80% of East Rural St. Andrew has been compromised following the battering from three weeks of consistent showers. He says a proper assessment would have to be done before an area can be declared a disaster zone. And uh, we, we cannot only look at East Rural St. Andrew alone. I know the situation here is extreme, but it is something that we'll have to look at. It is something that we have been looking at. So the call that he's making is not, is not a new call. It is something that we have been discussing at the level of, you know, the authority to see how best to treat the situation in East Rural. I would, I would agree with him um, that we have to, to pay uh, some attention now in terms of how we deal with, with the infrastructure in East Rural St. Andrew. In the meantime, Mr. Grant says the impact of the weather conditions has been severe on the country's coffee sector. Prior to this weekend's rain, we estimate that the loss could be in the region of $100 million, which represents berries falling from trees, um, so the farmers have lost those trees that has been lost due to land slippages, the increase in the operating costs um, for the farmers to get to their farms and also to get to the factories because of black roads, spoilage of coffee. All of these um, has amounted to significant losses for the coffee farmers. He, however, says he has received a commitment from Agriculture Minister Floyd Green of $80 million to assist the farmers who have been impacted. But despite the assistance, the association president says the extent of the damage is now greater due to the ongoing inclement weather. I would not be surprised to see after e evaluation, when all of this is settled, that this could move from $100 million to over $200 million. Now, residents of Nine Mile Bull Bay are literally living on the edge of devastation if immediate action is not taken to fix a worsening threat in the community because of the rains. Now, the images show homes slowly eroding away as heavy rains continue to wreak havoc across the island. This morning, West St. Thomas Member of Parliament James Robinson 
Robertson said, and teams from the National Works Agency visited the area trying to find a short-term solution. You can see where the river has breached the groin in Lower Seaforth, Upper York, threatening thousands of lives. What we're going to try and do is identify what we can do immediately to protect lives and to protect existing infrastructure. Mr. Robertson says, based on preliminary assessment, it's anticipated that repairs will be costly. The budget for what we're looking at is billions and billions. Where we have seen and what we have seen in the last 20 years, the levels, the height of the water, the amount of damage, we have never seen this before. And it's time now for a break here on the Midday News. But please stay with us. We have more news when we return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. Ascent and family is in grief following a fiery crash on the Queen's Highway Sunday morning, which killed four of their relatives, including a mother who was four months pregnant. Oshin Masters has the details. The identities of the four persons who died in yesterday's fiery two-vehicle collision on the Discover Bay Main Road in St. Anne have been revealed. They are 34-year-old Kadeen Howard and her sister 14-year-old Rihanna Howard, 13-year-old Jaden McLean and 32-year-old Jason Gale, all of Gibraltar in Monique St. Anne. It was reported that shortly before 8 o'clock, a Toyota feeder was traveling towards Trelawney when the driver lost control of the vehicle. It collided with a Mercedes-Benz. The Toyota feeder burst into flames. Rihanna and Jaden were flung from the car while Mr. Gale, who was a driver, and Kadeen Howard were trapped. Firefighters extinguished the blaze. Now, Beatrice Brown, the mother of Kadeen and Rihanna, told TVJ News on Monday that they were on a trip to visit family members in Montego Bay when the ordeal happened. I would rather wake up and see them this morning, but I can't see them. They're gone. They're gone. No more Kadeen. No more Rihanna. No more Jade. No more Jason. I miss them. Why me? Uncle, you know. Uncle, you Jesus know. Why me? Miss Brown says she has been depressed since she learned of the crash. The driver of the Mercedes-Benz suffered minor injuries. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. We go on to news in politics. At least one political analyst believes that the right candidate was elected on Saturday to lead the People's National Party, PNP. Prince Moore has the details. The much-anticipated PNP presidential election has come and gone, with Mark Golding being elected president. But questions still linger around the selection. Chief among them, is he the right choice to go up against Andrew Holness when the country goes to the polls in the next five years? And there's more than enough time for uh, Mark Golden to make up any deficit where popularity is concerned. But, but there's Amen. also enough time but Amen, for, for he won. However, assistant lecturer in the Department of Government at the University of the West Indies, Mona Damon Gordon, believes that should not be the major focus currently. He notes that the issue of disunity within the party, since the Dr. Peter Phillips Porsche Simpson Miller challenge, needs to be the main focus presently. Mr. Gordon noted that if those issues are not addressed, they could be detrimental to the political organization. Clearly, there are raw emotions on the party now to spend some time to, to reconcile the differences within the party. Um, the, the winning candidate has said that that is one of his main um, objectives moving forward to bring the party back together. Um, there's a possibility that they may establish a committee with the responsibility for doing so, but certainly that has to be a priority now. As to why South East St. Anne Member of Parliament Lisa Hanna did not find favour with the majority of delegates, Mr. Gordon says that is due to a number of factors including the slim margin of victory in the September 3 general election. There has been some questions about her stewardship of her constituency. For a lot of the voters, the, the stewardship of her constituency leaves much to be desired. And a lot of persons have said that this, the, the, the stewardship of her constituency, which was almost lost to the Jamaica Labour Party in the last election, indicates um, a deficiency in her leadership and her people skill. 
So those were question marks um, surrounding her. Mr. Gordon, who was speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica program Monday morning, noted that Mr. Golding has his work cut out in bringing together a hurting party, which has had a number of internal elections since 2007. Mark Golding on Saturday received 1,740 of the delegates' votes compared to Lisa Hanna's 1,444. Prince Moore, TVJ News. Jamaica's COVID-19 case count has increased to 9,542. The country recorded 36 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday. Their ages range from 1 to 73 years. Trelawney recorded the majority of the new cases, followed by Kingston and St. Andrew. Meanwhile, the country's death toll remains at 221. No COVID-19 deaths were recorded yesterday. We go on to news overseas. Drug maker Pfizer on Monday reported that an early look at data from its coronavirus vaccine shows it is more than 90% effective and much better than expected efficacy if the trend continues. The so-called interim analysis looked at the first 94 confirmed cases of COVID-19 among the more than 43,000 volunteers who got either two doses of the vaccine or a placebo. It found that fewer than 10% of infections were in participants who had been given the vaccine. More than 90% of the cases were in people who had been given a placebo. Pfizer said the vaccine provided protection seven days after the second dose and 28 days after the initial dose of the vaccine. The final goal of the trial is to reach 164 confirmed cases of coronavirus infections. In a news release, the pharmaceutical giant said it plans to seek emergency use authorization from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration soon after volunteers have been monitored for two months after getting their second dose of vaccine as requested by the FDA. And that's it for the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, good afternoon. <laughs>